They say that this equation is quite famous in fluid mechanics field. And they call this equation Bernoulli's equation. This equation is nothing more than conservation of energy. But you may be thinking, why? You know that this seems to be kinetic energy, right? And this seems to be gravitational potential energy. But what is this? You may be thinking that if you can derive this equation, you will be able to come to know the reason why this is regarded as energy. If you research about how we can derive Bernoulli's equation, you will realize that most books derive the equation not from conservation of energy, but from Newton's equation of motion. Why? Why do professors say that Bernoulli's equation is nothing more than conservation of energy? This video is going to answer the question. I'm going to review what conservation of energy is. You may know this equation well. This is the conservation of energy. This means the energy that a ball has and a force is applied on the ball. What will happen if I add the work done by this force? The addition of the energies will become this. This is the energy that the ball is having right now. It was so easy, right? By the way, this S means the length of this line. I'm going to explain it later. So even if you are not familiar with this S, please don't mind it for now. So, let's apply this equation to fluid. I'm going to write down this equation at the corner of the screen. I think that you don't need any explanation of this and this. They are just kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. You know about them well. So, I'm going to focus on this integral. Let's think about this fluid. What kind of forces are applied on this fluid? This fluid will move along this line and we will define the length as S. It means that this is the starting point, so the length is zero and the length from this point to this point is S. That's the definition of S. So S means its position as well. Okay? We said that the length of this is dS. And then the length from this point to this point will be s plus ds. Alright, we have another parameter, which is pressure P. We can say that the pressure on this surface is Ps. Can we come to know the value of the pressure on this surface? Yes, of course. We need to draw a graph. We have already known that the value of the pressure on this surface is Ps. The pressure that we'd like to know for now is on this surface. The position of this surface is S plus Ds, right? And the value of the pressure is we have not known yet, but we can get the value by using this curve. I said a curve, but this length, which is ds, is so short as if the curve is a straight line. 
That's why the value of this width will be the slope times ds, and that is dp ds ds. So the value of this pressure is this p plus this. Okay, we got the pressure on this surface. I'm going to talk about the forces applied on this fluid. Before that, I will clean the screen. The magnitude of the force applied on this surface is, you know, P times dA. dA is the area of this surface. In the same way, the magnitude of the force applied on this surface is this. And then the magnitude of the force in total is this minus this. And that is this. You may realize that this means the volume of the fluid. So this will become this. Now, I need to tell you something important for Bernoulli's equation. Bernoulli's equation assumes inviscid fluid. That's why no other forces are applied on this fluid. It is sure that gravity is one of the forces, but it has already been expressed in these terms. Alright. Please remember that we are finding the work done by this force, and the work is this. This is the definition of work, and we have already known that F equals to this. So we got this. How can we calculate this? Bernoulli's equation assumes incompressible fluid, and that's why this dV doesn't change. So we can put dV out of the integral, and we can say this will become this. I have already told you that these are absolutely the same. You can remember this graph dp is equal to this. Okay? I will move on. You can easily calculate this integral. We will be able to get this. Be careful of this minus. This doesn't have the minus, so p1 and p2 are switched. We finally succeeded in finding the work done by an external forces, and that is this. I will clean the screen, and let's move on to our main topic. Now we are perfectly ready to talk about this topic, the conservation of energy, for this fluid is this. You can compare this with this original equation. We know that this integral is this. And that is written in this term. Let's divide everything by dv. And then we can get this equation. I'm going to move p2 over the other side. You see, we succeeded in deriving Bernoulli's equation. If we review the way we derive Bernoulli's equation, we will realize that these are also the conditions of the equation. People tend to forget this condition, number 3. This means that we cannot compare the pressure at this point with this point. We should keep it in our mind. 
Okay, we derived Bernoulli's equation. Can you explain the reason why these are related to energy? We considered the work done by pressure. That's why these appeared in this equation. Most books derive the equation from Newton's equation of motion, but we derived the equation from conservation of energy. Why can we do that? It's because Conservation of energy can be derived from Newton's equation of motion, and vice versa. Newton's equation can be derived from conservation of energy. I mean, this one and this one are absolutely the same equation. Would you like to know the reason? If you need it, I will upload the video about it.